Let's go over the rules for naming aldehydes. An aldehyde is a molecule that has this functional group right here. It's a carbon-oxygen double bond that has at least one hydrogen attached to the carbon. On the other end of the carbon-oxygen double bond, it could be a carbon chain like we're seeing here, or if we scroll down a little bit, we could have a carbon-oxygen double bond that has hydrogen on either side. That would be another example of an aldehyde. So let's go over the example for naming an aldehyde. First of all, the aldehyde functional group is high priority, which means that when we name the molecule, we want to look for the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon-oxygen double bond. It may or may not be the longest carbon chain in the molecule. It just has to contain that carbon-oxygen double bond. Once we have found that longest carbon chain, then we want to number the carbon chain to give the carbon oxygen double bond the lowest possible number. For an aldehyde, it's always gonna be carbon number one because the aldehyde um, requires the carbon oxygen double bond to be at the end of the carbon chain. It has to have a hydrogen attached. And we'll come back to this. It always has to be carbon number one. We'll come back to that uh, again when we're naming. So we're going to number the carbon chain so that the aldehyde group is carbon number one. We will, like usual, we will start the molecule's name by indicating any stereochemistry that's shown to us in the molecule. For this particular example, we have a carbon-carbon double bond with trans or E stereochemistry, so that's the beginning of the name. Carbon number four is a chiral carbon, but since the wedge or dash notation is not being used to represent this molecule, we have no idea if carbon number four is R or S, and because we don't know, we can't assign stereochemistry. Once we get the stereochemistry assigned, then just like usual, we're gonna name substituents that are on the carbon chain and name them in alphabetical order. Here we have a chlorine on carbon number four. And then once we get all of the substituents named, we're ready to name the parent chain um, of the molecule. The parent chain of the molecule is going to have the ending changed to al to indicate that it is an aldehyde. So this is a five carbon chain, which is a pentane. Well, in this case, it's a pentene because it has a carbon-carbon double bond. And to indicate that it's an aldehyde, we're going to drop that last E and replace it with al. We don't lose the ene part or the ane or the ine because that is giving us information about whether or not we have carbon-carbon double bonds or triple bonds or single bonds or whatever. We're just dropping that very last E. Let's practice with this molecule right here. Um, so first we want to find the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon-oxygen double bond. So there it is right there. And we want to number that carbon chain to give the carbon-oxygen double bond number one. So we're going to number it like that. This particular molecule has no stereochemistry, so we can move on to naming the substituents. We have a methyl group on carbon number two for this molecule. This is a three carbon chain, which is a propane. But because it's an aldehyde, we're going to drop that final E and we're going to replace it with al. Because the aldehyde, as I said, because the aldehyde is always on carbon number one, it has to be on carbon number one, we don't locate the position of the aldehyde. So we don't say propan one al or we don't say one propanal. It's implied that the aldehyde group is on carbon number one. So you never say the location of the aldehyde group. Three methyl propanal. Here are a couple of more examples for us to do. First, we want to find the longest carbon chain that includes the carbon-oxygen double bond. And with this particular molecule, I'm going to number it instead, when we get to carbon number three and we want to move on to carbon number four, we've got two choices of where carbon number four should be. When you have two choices and they're equally long, you should always choose the path that includes the most functional groups. That makes it easier to name the molecule. It's pretty similar to the rule that you learned at the very beginning of the year. If you have two carbon chains that are equally long, you should choose the one that has the most branches. Also, choose the one that has the most functional groups. It makes it easier to name so this, um, this double bond doesn't have stereochemistry. Terminal double bonds don't have stereochemistry. We have a methyl group on carbon number three. So this is three methyl. Um, this is a four carbon chain. So I'm gonna kinda gonna have to edit this a little bit. Um, a four carbon chain is a butane. 
but this carbon chain has a double bond, which makes it a butene. And we have to say, not just say butene, but we have to say where that ene is located. So we have our carbon-carbon double bond starting at carbon number three. So this is a but three ene. And then we drop that last E and replace it with Al to indicate that it's an aldehyde. 3 methyl but 3 en al Here's our next example. The aldehyde is going to be carbon number one. We're going for the longest carbon chain. Now here, remember, we haven't looked at one like this in a while. When you're finding the longest carbon chain, it has to either be all straight chain or all cyclic. You can't mix and match out of a ring into a ring. You have to either be exclusively in the ring or exclusively out of the ring. So this is a three carbon chain with the substituent on carbon number two. This cyclohexane is our substituent. As a substituent, we call it cyclohexol. Cyclohexol. Cyclohexol three carbon chain is propane, but we drop that last E and replace it with Al. 2-cyclohexyl propanol. Last but not least, here's our carbon number one. Here's two. Where are we going to go? 3-4 or 3-4 or 3-4. Go in the direction that has the most functional groups. That makes it easier to name. So there's our parent chain right there. Our substituent on carbon number two is an isopropyl group. 2-isopropyl our parent chain is a four carbon chain, which is a butane, but this one has a triple bond. So instead of butane, it's a butyne. And whenever we have a butyne, we have to say where it's located. It's located on carbon number three. So this is but three ine. Drop that last E and replace it with Al. That's a really awkward name. Two isopropyl but three ine Al. Oh, sounds yucky. Here are three aldehydes that, that um, go by non-systematic names, common names. This little one carbon aldehyde, its, it's IUPAC name is methanol, but it is commonly referred to as formaldehyde. This little guy here, a two carbon aldehyde, its IUPAC name is ethanol, but it goes by the common name acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. And then last but not least, um, we have benzaldehyde.